In this movie, we've got our frog animated. We're working on version D of scene two. So if you'd like to open up this actual file and the working files, this is the one to snag now. At this point, we're going to begin animating our cars through the scene based on pre-existing actions we've set up for them. And then we'll also animate the camera motion. The whole point of this animation is to create a sense of overwhelming vehicle traffic on this road so that the frog just has little or no chance of getting across. So we're looking for a little comedic value. The one thing that's difficult to remember sometimes working in animations is that you will have sound effects to help tell the story off the screen and that's the case here as well. Not only will we have our frog looking around but we'll have some of that nice bucolic uh, meadow music going as well as you know wildlife sounds but then that's going to become punctuated rather quickly with the sound effects that will be applied later to the animation, not in this series, but of vehicles coming down the road and buzzing by at highway speed. Let's take a look and see where we are in our animation. We've got our frog that looks right, then left, and now he's looking back to the right. This is about the point that we want the vehicles to start crossing in front of our character so that he's got a few blinks in there as the cars begin going by before we start adding the rest and doing the camera swing out. We've got our vehicles all labeled now with correct Z-depths. They're layered at the top, and I like to do that just for my own organization to have the objects that are clear, closest to the camera to also be the highest in the list, and then backwards that way. Using the project setting, sort layer by depth, you don't have to do it this way. It's just easier, at least for me, to keep track of all the various parts. Truck 1 already had a keyframe applied actually to it where it brought in the action for it and that wound up being too distracting right out of the, the, the gate for this little 20 second segment right here. So I deleted that and we'll be applying it right here instead where we're just starting the look ahead motion. We're starting to get the blinks and I want the truck coming by pretty quick. So with the truck selected I simply come to the actions palette, choose truck right to left and insert. We see here in the timeline now that we have got that looping action going on and the truck goes woof, comes by once and we'll see it again in just a second about right there. At this point in time where we start seeing the truck appear for the second time I'm going to go ahead and choose yellow car, check the action car right to left and insert. So now as we start moving through this we'll see the truck come by We'll get a different color car that will come by. And then both those start coming by, and they will, but not in succession. Remember, we use the prime numbers to help prevent patterns from showing up and emerging. As we add more cars right here, this is going to be wonderful. So from this point right here, where we get the red truck occurring for about the second time, I'm going to come down to my camera and right here for the camera tracking I'm going to add a keyframe by right clicking or control clicking if you're on the Macintosh and we're going to want to add a keyframe right there for the camera there we go this is to make sure that the camera has no movement between keyframe 0 or frame 1 at this point in time if we drag back and forth right here we'll see that the camera stays locked in place which is perfect. However now I'm going to go ahead and move to the end of the movie. I'll go ahead and click the end and actually backtrack just a little bit for about two seconds and the reason for that is is that once the camera resolves back at its maximum pullback I want the viewers to be able to see all these vehicles traveling back and forth on the road. So from this point right here, frame 456, right at 19 seconds, I'll hold down the Alt key and I'm simply going to, let me make sure I've got cameras selected right here. I'm going to pull back so that we get to see the road. Now remember when we first set the cars, it seemed like the cars were too small for the scene. When I change the Z depth of them, they gained a little uh, size because they're nearer the camera. In fact, you can see them sitting on the road, so it worked out just perfectly for that. Now as we go ahead and scrub our timeline, we see the camera movement, but we also see the cars moving as well. And it looks like we've got a geometry issue with one of those cars. 
that we'll be able to fix very easily. That is the beauty of working with imported actions is that we can fix that. So just to make sure that we've got uh, enough things going on at this point right here, I'm going to insert red car, the action for that right to left. We've got a camera pull back. I'm going to insert the action for the blue car. So we've got a lot of those going back there now. As soon as we fix the geometry on the yellow one, that will look a little bit nicer. Then I'll add at this point, move down a little bit further, truck two, which is a gray truck. I'll insert that action. And then finally, as a last touch, truck three, I'll insert the brown truck right to left action as well. So now from roughly 14 seconds on, as we move through the animation, we start getting this buildup of huge amounts of traffic. When we come back in our next movie, I'll have the geometry corrected on this yellow car and tell you how I did it. And then we'll go ahead and make some final considerations for final animation rendering.